boom yes folks you may again how are you going so this is the second video in our series on factorization in the first video we covered the case of the univariate binomial where you have a binomial with just one variable alone we spent some time at the beginning of that video just explaining and giving examples so at the beginning of this video i will do the same thing in the case of the bivariate binomial all right so a bivariate bi means two we know that by is the prefix that signifies two so bivariate two variables two things that could vary so a typical example would be 13 pq plus 26 pq squared right or you can have 11 p squared q squared minus 22p you can have minus 13 pq uh, plus 26 pq squared you can have minus 11 p squared q squared minus 22 Right? These are the four examples that I will use to illustrate the factorization of a bivariate binomial. So let me get the show on the road. Let me get the ball turning. Let me get the ball running, so to speak. Let me get the ball rolling, sorry, not running. Let me get the ball rolling. Let me get the wheels turning. Let me get the engine running. You see, you have to be so careful with your vocabulary, with your words and your phrases. Yeah? Right. So let me start the thing. So 13pq, right? We're doing it just as we did in the case of the univariate. 13pq plus 26pq squared. Right. Now what you would find, and those of you who actually taking the time to do the exercises, either my exercises or exercises in other places, you will find that there's a gradual increase in the difficulty. So if you could factorize a univariate binomial, then when you have a bivariate binomial where you have two variables, you realize that the process is the same. You take out the common factors, you check inside the bracket to see if there's anything to factorize, and you do that until you have a factorization that is complete, a complete factorization where it is no longer possible to take out any factor there's nothing left to be taken out. Same process. The only difference is that you now have an extra variable, that's all. Right? So, you look at 13pq plus 26pq squared. Most people on seeing this, the first thing they would look at is the 13 and the 26. Most people would be able to realize that, hey, 13 by 2 is 26. Alright? No problem. So, we take out the 13. Right? There's nothing really, there's nothing else to take out. It is not like when you have 6 and you can take out the 2 or the 3 as we discussed in the first video. In this case, the only thing you can take out is 13. So there we go. 13. Alright? You take out the 13. You have the brackets inside. 13 into 13 PQ will leave you with PQ. 13 into 26 PQ squared will leave you with 13 into 26 is 2. And you have the PQ squared right there. Alright, so writing it like this gives you the opportunity to conduct a proper visual inspection. You could double check as you go along. 13 by PQ is 13 PQ. 13 by 2 is 26. 13 by 2 P squared is 26 P squared. So you know you're going good so far. Right? And as we discussed previously, you go back inside the bracket now to see if there's anything else that you could take out. You have a P here and you have a P here. So let me go with that. Right? So you have 13. Right? On the outside. You have a P now. 13 multiplied by P. Notice, I didn't put the dot as was the case before. Because before, we had two numbers. So you put the dot to signify that the two numbers being multiplied by each other. So 2 dot 2 would be 2 multiplied by 2. 13 with a P next to it only means one thing. 13 multiplied by P. Right? So 13 multiplied by P. Your P now is the latest variable that you take out. So you divide what you have inside the bracket by the P. So PQ divided by P will give you a Q. 
2 pq squared divided by p will give you 2 q squared. All right? So you now have 13 p into q. Right, into q plus 2 q squared. I was just double checking something there. Right? Now, you look back inside the brackets again to see if you have anything in here that they can factorize. And yes, you have a Q here and you have a Q squared here. So here what? We take out Q as a common factor. So you have the 13 by the P already on the outside. 13, P, and then you have the Q. Again, the Q is the latest variable. So Q into Q is 1. Uh -huh. Q into 2 Q squared will be 2 Q. And that is your final answer. Right? As we discussed before, there are folks who will be able to move from here to here in one shot. Right? To team PQ into 1 plus 2Q. There are folks who could do that. No problem. As you practice, you will find that you get smoother and smoother and eventually one day you realize, but wait, bram bram. You see everything in a group, you pull it out, one line and you move along. But if you're not there yet, Right? As is the case with almost everything else. You have to give it some time, you have to give it some patience, attention, focus, practice. Have to. Alright? So that is the first example. You see two different variables on the outside. In addition to our number. So in other words, the common factor that we take out could take different forms. It could either be a number, an integer, or it could be a variable, as we would have seen in the first video. And at the level of a variable, it could be more than one variable too, as we see in here. P and Q. Right? And of course, as we have seen before, you have negative factors that you could pull outside too. We come into that soon. Alright? So let me check out the next one now. The next one in this series where we're dealing with bivariate binomials. Mm -hmm. <coughs> All right, so we're going again. So the next example in this series on bivariate binomial, we have 11, right? Let me make some space here. 11 p squared q squared minus 22p, right? Nice. So again, you look at it and you look at the numbers first because the numbers would usually be what people pick up first, right? We're more familiar with numbers if we're dealing with maths, right? Most people, they're very good with maths when it's just numbers alone. And as soon as letters enter the fray, they will tell you they start to get problems. A lot of people, that is the problem that they have with algebra. They're not quite comfortable with this, this is the letters thing, A and B and C and X and Y. Right, the letters just represent a number or any number, but that's a different discussion that we will continue to have. So in a case like this, where the numbers and the letters occur together in the same space, because of familiarity, we would be drawn to the numbers first. So no problem. Look at the numbers first and see what are the common factors there. Take those out and then you start to go through the letters. The letters, of course, that represent the variables. So in this case, 11, 22, no problem. You take out the 11 as a common factor. All right? So you take out the 11, no problem. You take out the 11, brackets again. P squared, Q squared on the inside, minus 2P on the inside as well. Right? 11 into 22 is 2P. 11 into 11 is 1. P squared, Q squared. Not a problem. So we're going again. Remember, we ain't finished yet. So you can't stop here. Alright? Let me take... 
Well, in this case, excuse me, you have P squared, Q squared, and you have 2P. So the only thing we could take out here is the P. There's no Q here to say we could take out the Q. So let me take out the P. So your next step is to say 11 multiplied by P. P is the new variable on the outside. P into P squared is P. P, Q squared, minus 2. P into P is 1. And that is the final answer. So you start from here, you factorize, and the actual answer is 11P into P, Q squared, minus 2. Right? If you multiply this back in the opposite direction, you'll get back the original question that you had before. Multiplying, this is what we refer to as the expansions. That is the flip side of factorization. Right? Um, so that's basically it. Right? Basically it. This one, we, and, you, and you realize we're going through it a lot faster now. Once we build the foundation with the univariate, going to bivariate is just an extension just a little bit more right and then we go to trivariate and then at that, at that point you realize you could factorize any number of terms with any number of variables because they have the basic building blocks in place so with that we can move on to the next one the next permutation Right? We're using the vocabulary so that you get it into your system. Right? The next permutation would be same set of variables, but we're introducing, we're mixing it up. Right? Minus 13 PQ plus 26 um, PQ squared. Right? So you realize that I'm just moving around the minus sign because I want folks to get accustomed to factorizing where the minus sign is part of the equation, right? Everybody comfortable when everything is positive as soon as you turn the minus sign, mm, right? You have to get comfortable with your minus sign. It is something that you'll hear me saying again and again and again and again, right? So... You could do one of two things. You see a minus sign, as we discussed in the first video, a very good strategy is to deal with the minus sign first. And then focus on all the variables. So I'll do the two methods. I'll deal with everything and then do the minus sign last. And then I'll do the minus sign first and deal with everything else. So let me start with what most people would do in this case and pull out the 13. Right, you pull out the 13, no problem. You take out the 13, 13 into minus 13 pq is minus pq, not pq. Again, we discussed this last time in the first video. Common mistake people would make is to put pq here and not minus pq. You have to be very careful with your signs, and again, that is why it may be a very good strategy to deal with the minus sign first. That way, you take that out of the picture and then you just go normal. So you kind of mitigate against the possibility of doing everything and then forgetting the minus sign. Deal with the minus sign first and just flow from there. I think it's a good strategy for folks who are struggling with the factorization, for folks who have issues dealing with the minus sign in the factorization. So I want to recommend that to you, right? Deal with the minus sign first. When you have a factorized, when you have an expression to factorize, we have a minus sign in the first term, deal with the minus sign first, right? But we here already, so let me finish. Uh, 2PQ squared, not 2, sorry, 26. I write the wrong thing there, man. Right, so 13 into 26, is 2, 2, P, Q squared, right? So, same procedure, the difference is that we have a minus sign here. So, we know that at some point that will complicate things, but let me proceed. We're still looking for letters now because we finished with the numbers. P here and P here. So, you're saying 13, P, enter, make sure you do your division. P into minus P, Q is minus Q plus 2 Q squared.
square. Alright? Nice. So you're looking for your other letters now. Q. Q here and Q squared here. So you're taking out the Q. So 13 P Q into minus 1 plus 2 Q. Alright. So you see what happened here now? Normally this would be the end of the discussion. But we have already stated that in a situation like this where you have a minus sign in the first term, you don't leave the negative sign there. You do something to get rid of the negative sign without changing the value of the expression. So you change the appearance, you change the form without changing the value, without changing the substance. Right? And again, that is one of those life principles as well. Sometimes the appearance of a thing could be different, could change, but the essential substance, the form, remains the same. And as humans, sometimes we have difficulty differentiating the fact that even though the form or the shape or the appearance is different, the essential substance is the same same thing in maths right so we're going to change the appearance of this without changing the value and how we do that we do that by taking out minus one as a common factor here from inside the brackets bringing it outside and we know that once we divide by minus one it will trigger a change in sign for all of the variables inside the bracket right so your next line would be minus 1 by 13p q signs change 1 minus 2 q right and that is the answer so you see how different the answer looks for this as opposed to when it was 13 p q plus 26 p q squared right watch it when it was, let me go in a little box here now. 13 pq plus 26 pq squared. The answer was 13 pq into 1 plus 2q. Right? You just introduce a minus sign for the minus 13 pq plus 26 pq squared. And suddenly the answer now is this here minus 13 pq into 1 minus 2q so you have to be cognizant of these differences you have to be aware that the minus sign changes things and that is why in my own exercises i would have structured the questions in a particular way so that they get accustomed to the thing evolving so we start from everything positive you put the negative sign inside and you put the negative sign outside and then you bring the negative sign in both cases, right? So you have to get accustomed to it, you have to practice. So let me move on now to the third and the final permutation where the bivariate binomials are concerned, right? So you see we're flowing a lot faster here now. And this is what I want you all to experience when we're doing the people work right you have to put in the bulwark you have to put in the bulwark so if you do 80 questions on univariate binomials you will develop a certain rhythm and a certain cadence so to speak cadence that's a new word certain rhythm cadence same thing right but let me check and see what the phone's saying now all the city hmm? They know we like to vocabularize in the arithmetic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. <coughs> yeah, boy. How to get a dictionary, you know. I don't tell that already. Hmm? The codons. Um, C A D E N C E. C A. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. C A D E N C E. Cadence, meaning. Cadence is more like voice 
or the, the official meaning refers to <laughs> they say um, a modulation no hold on hold on hold on let me check the other definitions right just rhythm that's all so there are other definitions here you'll see on Google they're talking about a modulation or inflection of the voice a rhythmical effect in written text etc etc a sequence of notes or chords comprising the close of a, of a musical phrase so we talk about cadence in music but the most important idea about a cadence is rhythm rhythm right so the same way you could develop you could have a cadence when you're speaking or a cadence when you're marching playing music right cadence C A D N C E. you could also develop a cadence a rhythm when you're doing maths right and that is the purpose of doing all these questions of practice you have to get a rhythm going and certain topics lend themselves naturally to that rhythm factorization is one of those topics right you do enough questions you start to develop a rhythm you start to develop a flow and before long you realize that it is so hard but you have to go through the process of practicing first and that now once you get to the hang of the factorization it will take you through other topics a lot faster a lot easier and then you start to develop your confidence in your maths so i want to encourage folks again take your time and do the groundwork there is no getting away from it right in my own situation here i put 240 factorization questions together this year is the second installment right and there are all other kinds of other places to find questions to practice right so don't neglect your practice that is a must that is what will make the difference right between kind of fighting up with the maths and getting through practice is what will make the difference between knowing the maths and not being able to execute in an exam situation it will make the difference between that and going in the exam and putting down a proper performance you have to practice all right so last permutation in this segment minus 11 p squared q squared minus 22 p Woo, pressure boy so you look at this expression and you see two minus signs they say mm -hmm. you say right so again psychology mind mental you see the negative sign and you start to slow down at that point there are options in terms of what could happen if you're really not comfortable with it and you know you're not comfortable maybe you didn't do enough work you'll start to back back because you tell yourself once it have a minus sign is problems you're saying well why they didn't just put all positive and done because i know how to do all positive no that's not how it works right you go in the exam and you see an expression and you have negative signs in the expression what do you do well in this case let me go straight for the juggler let me take out the minus sign first and then deal with everything else afterwards all right so you take out the minus sign so you say minus 1 into p squared sorry 11 we ain't, we ain't touch the 11 yet into 11 p squared q squared remember when we take out the negative sign the signs inside the bracket will change right so instead of minus here it'll be plus and then because we took out the minus one you'll also have a plus 22p here right if you want to double check you could say minus one into minus 11 p squared q squared is 11 p squared p squared q squared so minus 11 p squared q squared divided by minus one will give you 11 p squared q squared not p squared 11 p, p squared q squared minus 22 p divided by minus 1 will give you plus 22 p or the other way around minus 1 by plus 22 p will give you minus 22 p right we had to get comfortable dealing with the minus sign very very important 
that is one of your fundamental building blocks on the road to getting better in maths. So we're going again. So we take out the minus sign, we take that out so we no longer have to worry about what to do with the minus sign, if it's about minus sign, ra 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 ra. No. We take out the minus sign and we're dealing with positives alone now. So you're looking here, you look at the numbers first of all, you see 11 here and you see 22 here. No problem. Let me take out the 11. So you have minus 1 by 11, right? Which will give you a minus 11 into 11 now will be 11 into 11 is p squared q squared plus 11 into 22 is 2p. Remember, using the system that we adopted, in this line we're not divided by minus 11, we're divided by 11. So to make the point, let me separate the two factors. We had minus 1 as the first factor and we have 11 as the second factor. Right? I'm trying to break it down as much as possible so that those of us who have issues and problems with the factorization could see the sequence in a more transparent manner. You see exactly what we're talking about when we say certain things. And then you could go back now to just writing it, how we are custom writing it. And it might even put you in a position now where you could explain it to somebody else. That's your idea, that's your point of what we're doing here. Alright? So minus 1 by 11. So we divide it by 11 alone. 11 into 11, p squared q squared is p squared q squared. 11 into 22p is 2p. Right. So we have the minus 11 outside. Minus 1 by 11 is a minus 11, right? Now we're looking for the letters on the inside. So you see the p. Let me take the P, right? Most people will go from right to left because that is how we read. So you see the P, let me go with the P. You have P squared here and you have 2P here. So you realize, well, all right, P is our common factor. Well, all right. So you have minus 11, right? Put that in brackets by P, right? P into P squared Q squared is P Q squared. P into 2P is Two, right? So at this stage, there's nothing more to take out. So that's basically it. So you have minus 11 by P by P Q squared plus 2. So that the final answer would be minus 11 P into P Q squared plus 2. Yeah? Right. So that is basically it. Right? That is basically it. Of course, as I would have mentioned before, folks will go from here to here in one line. So in some cases, there are people who, the first thing they will do will be to take out your mind, the whole minus 11. No problem. So they start with this and they say, well, all right, minus 11. Right? Minus 11 into what? P squared, Q squared, plus 2P. Right? And then you take out the P, and you'll have minus 11P into P, Q squared plus 2. Two lines in red, as opposed to 1, 2, 3, 4 in black, right? But as we discussed in the first video, it's not a race we're running. They say the race is, for the, they say the race is not for the swiftest, but... For those who endure to the end, right? That is one of the popular scriptures in the Bible. And I am sure that there are equivalent scriptures in other holy books as well. The whole, the whole idea that you don't have to hurry, that you don't have to rush, that is not a race. This is not even a race. To say, well, it's a race that is not for the swiftest. It's not a race. Everybody going at their own pace. So in other words, don't race. Move at your own pace. Right? If you're a little slow, there's no disgrace. You see, we're rhyming too. Yeah? Boom! Alright? So, I want to round off this series of videos by just giving a little peep into what is possible if you take your time to master the univariate and the 
bivariate um, binomial because that will put you in a position now to move to trinomial and trivariate and whatever else. So let us, for the sake of argument, say that we now have a trivariate trinomial. Mm -hmm. You see? I'm using the vocabulary so that you understand certain things. And when you see the thing, you can recognize the thing and know what the thing is. Yeah? So we're going again. A trivariate trinomial is what? Trivariate is three variables. So let me say ABC. No problem. So let me say um, uh, 7 a squared b c cubed plus 14 a b plus sorry let me make life out interesting uh, minus uh, 49 right uh, b uh, b squared c to the power of 5 yeah <laughs> right it is not likely that you'll get an ex a, 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 an expression looking like this to factorize although i have seen expressions like this in past papers before so you never know you might actually get one right so while i myself have not actually put together a whole exercise on trinomials because the thing is once you get into once it gets to univariate binomial, bivariate binomial, once you clear those two, then after that, anything is possible. You can, you can jump to anything. There is no longer any limit once you master the factorization of binomials, whether it is a univariate binomial or a bivariate binomial. And that is why I put the questions together in my set. 120 questions in all. 80 questions in the univariate and 40 questions in the bivariate. You take your time and you go through those 120 after the sky is the limit. Because when you come here, you have a trinomial now. One, two, three. Three variables. A, B, C. It's the same process. Right? So without going through all the lines on the board because you realize with three variables we have more lines but i'll see let me see what i could do common factor seven seven here 14 here minus 49 here so you take out the seven first all right seven into a squared b c cube plus two a b minus seven uh b squared c to the power of five no problem. At this stage now, one or two things will happen. You either have a common factor that's running across all three terms, or you don't. Because if you realize, we have an A here and an A here, but we don't have an A here. See? We have a C here and a C here, but we don't have a C here. We have a B here, a B here. And a b squared here so it wasn't as long as i thought it would have been just by looking at the length of this line here right it actually end up solving in just two lines because at this point the only common factor is b right so 7b 7b into b into b is 1 a squared c to the power of 3 right uh, 2ab, b into 2ab, 2ab divided by b is uh, 2a, right, minus, we divided by b here, not 7, we already deal with the 7s, so b divided by b squared, well b into b squared, b squared divided by b, it will just be b, so you end up with 7 minus 7, b, c to the power of 5, and this is the answer. So even though you had a long expression, three terms, 
in three variables with some powers and thing. Right? Once you have your foundations right, even when you see this, it will not intimidate you. You wouldn't have to run from it because you would have spent the necessary time to master the factorization at the level of two terms, binomials, up to two variables, bivariate, including the cases where you have numbers, integers, positive or negative. All right? So that is it for the case of the binomial the binomials the univariate we covered first and now we just did the bivariate all right so again i want to encourage you find questions and practice 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 it makes all the difference in the world